So today I'm gonna to show you how we denoise our Blender animations and get better quality out of the same render time. Here we are in Blender. Uh, we've got this simple animation here of a planter on a kitchen counter. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do, our target for our final video is going to be 1080p. So we're going to actually render this in 4K and then downsample it to 1080p. Because of that, we can go ahead and drop our samples to a quarter of what they are because we're rendering four times as many pixels. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is we can export about four times as much data in the same time. And even though it's gonna be noisy because we're rendering in 4K, we actually get about the same quality image. And then when we denoise later, we actually have more pixels to work with so we get a better final image. We're gonna go ahead to our advanced settings here, change our pattern for the noise to blue noise, and then change our seed and click the little clock icon here. This is gonna turn on animated seed. This is really important because what this is gonna do is going to use a different seed for the noise in every frame. So if you've ever exported a uh, not denoised uh, animation sequence in Blender, notice that the noise is the same. It, it looks like this grainy overlay, that's why. Now our goal here is to emulate what a camera does. And so the best way to do that is set your pattern to blue noise and turn that animated seed on. That's probably gonna be the most important thing that you do from this whole tutorial. Then we're gonna go down and we're going to change our view transform. I'll just turn on back to our rendered view here so you see the difference. We're going to turn our view transform from filmic to filmic log and our look to none. Now the reason we're gonna do that is because again, we're trying to emulate what a real camera does here. And if we're a professional videographer or cinematographer, we're going to be filming in some form of vlog and doing the color correction later. So not only will this give us more control over the color, Doing the denoising before we add any color correction actually gives us a better denoise and a better final image. Now, once you have all these settings set, you can go ahead and render your animation. Now, I've got our video open here in Premiere Pro. Um, this is what our untouched video looks like. We can see that there's a lot of noise here in the background, especially some here in the foreground. Overall, this is very noisy. If I were to go ahead and color correct this by dropping the blacks, I'm just gonna do a quick slam the contrast Raise the highlights a bit, shadows down a healthy amount until it's decent looking. Turn on a LUT, reduce the intensity of that LUT, and play that. We can really see all that noise. We're gonna get rid of all that. So we can go ahead and disable that color correction. I was just doing that to show you. Uh, the plugin that we're gonna be using is called Neat Video. I'm gonna link the plugin down below. It does cost money, but I promise you this plugin is worth every single dollar that you're gonna spend on it. I use this all the time. I use it on every animation that we export and I use it on any video projects that I have because it's just so good. Now, it's available for pretty much every major video editing platform. Um, but the tutorial will apply the same based on whatever you're using because when you launch Neat Video, uh, it opens in its own window. That'll be the same for every platform or every software that you're on. So go ahead and drop this onto our clip. First thing we're gonna do is gonna hit prepare. This is gonna load up some frames for Neat Video to use and then we can hit build. There we go. Now we've got it open and you can actually see in the bottom uh, views there, the compression artifacts from exporting this as a JPEG. Don't export your animations as JPEG, use PNG. If your video editing or compositing software supports OpenEXR, do that. I was lazy and you can see the choppiness because of that. Whoops. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to select an area here that's roughly all the same color where we can actually see our noise. Uh, and so if you're getting that not uniform issue, then we can try to change this around, boom, there. Pretty much everything here is the same color, um, but we've got a nice noise pattern here. And so this is gonna let Neat Video analyze this noise pattern and create a denoising filter for the video. So we can go ahead and hit build profile. And then we're gonna get going to go over to adjust and preview. Boom, we've already done a bunch of denoisings. Where I select now will show us our filtered view. We can see that it's actually removing a bunch of noise from the background and foreground but some of the more detailed spots like here, still really noisy and some of the blurrier things in the background are still very noisy. So we can fix all of that. The first thing that I'm gonna do is change our quality mode from normal to high because I would rather have a slower export and better quality. Then we're gonna click our temporal noise drop down, and on noise level check, we're gonna hit begin. Now here uh, we want to see pretty much no white, but we don't wanna see all the way blue. If our image looks like that, then we're doing too much denoising. 
Um, so we're going to set our noise level here to about, let's do 40% because we, like I said, we want to see some white, we want some noise because we want this to look real. Um, and we can go ahead and hit finish and already looking better, but we've still got some noise here, especially just on the blurry parts. Uh, and again, you'd probably have a better time doing this if I didn't export this in JPEG, which I did. So that's my fault. Don't do that. Um, we're going to go to local flicker check and hit begin. And same thing. We don't want the image to be completely blue, but we want to see some white, but we can see in our problem areas here uh, where the local flicker is happening um, and where that noise is. So we're gonna go ahead and raise that to, let's do five. That's a lot, but our image is pretty noisy. So let's do that. Let's hit finish. All right, looking better. It's not done, but it's a lot better than it was before. There's nothing filtered, nothing filtered. So making progress. Next thing we can do is go down to our, we're gonna skip repeated frames because repeated frames isn't really affecting what we're doing here. And for the rest of this, I'm going to focus on the details here and the leaves. So we're going to go to jitter of details this, um, for all these settings here, you really just want to adjust them based on what looks good. You can drag things up, drag things down. It's really just trying to get a nice clean image. None of this is that scientific. You can just kind of get it close. Um, I see as I'm raising and lowering this, some of the pixels are changing, but we're not seeing that much of a change. We're kind of just losing detail everywhere and we don't really have a lot of jittering happening. Um, because this is an animation and this is not real video where we don't have like a bad sensor or anything like that. But probably what's going to be the most helpful, and this one tends to be really helpful in really bright scenes or really blurry scenes with a lot of depth of field, is dust and scratches. I'm going to go ahead and change our mode to aggressive. And then we're going to raise our threshold. And we can see as we're raising that threshold that those shadowy parts in the leaves here actually start to denoise. Let's raise that to like 280. Done. So if we compare our background here to what we started with, to what we finished, we've actually successfully gotten rid of almost all of the noise. Now, before you apply this, you can go ahead and go to tools, preferences, and then performance and update all of these settings. This will by far improve your render speed out, out, out exporting from your compositing software like four to five times faster. It's pretty amazing. I didn't realize that I just was set to CPU with like two cores when I first started using this. It took me way too long to discover that feature. So make sure you turn that on and save yourself a bunch of time. We can go ahead and hit apply. Now, if we play our video from the start without our denoising, this is what it looked like. There's a lot of noise happening. But then if we apply neat video and then play it back again, much better. Now, even though we are still getting some noise in the background, we're exporting this as 1080p and we'll lose even more of those jittery details in the background. So here's what we started with. And here's what we finished with. If we go ahead and apply our color correction and then view that noise again, here is color corrected, no denoising. And then here is neat video back on. We're gonna play that again. And then we're gonna go ahead and export this as 1080p and it's gonna look amazing. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you out. Comment down below if you've got any questions and we'll see you on the next video.